Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I aim to rescue Milden from an orbit around the Earth. Unfortunately it is an equatorial orbit and I realized that my Lynx S2 craft that was currently being built did not have enough Delta V to get to that equatorial orbit from Cape Canaveral where it was being built and we can't simply, I think, transfer the rocket from one pad to another otherwise I would launch from Kourou. At least, I don't think that that's possible with Kerbal Construction Time. You guys can tell me in the comments if that's not the case and we can transfer them from one pad to another. But I'll assume that I have to make a major correction uh, to my inclination in order to get to Milden because Milden is at the equator for some reason, uh, because I guess there's a stock thing to do. And so it's going to be hard. We recently saw a SpaceX launch where they had to basically make a left turn and uh, try to correct the inclination in order to place the satellite into the correct orbit and it's going to be hard here too. Uh, to that end I have redesigned the Lynx S2 so that it has eight boosters instead of four and a much larger core and also a larger upper stage here and the upper stage also has RCS and it already was able to restart it was using the engine 2 vacuums so with all that and also an increased uh, service module here you can see and we've got bigger solar panels and everything uh, same engines though uh, just MHN Mon3 engines these are the 12 kilonewton ones so yep and I think we have enough Delta V perhaps but I'm not sure if it turns out that this is not able to grab Milden we are going to have to make a smaller rocket for the Mark 1 pod quickly because you know otherwise we don't have the money really really we don't have the money to do a whole lot more than this uh, in fact I don't know how much additional cost this is going to be it might be quite a lot uh, so yeah I'm hoping it's not too much additional cost but yeah Milden will have to be rescued by a mark one pod and a sort of stripped down sort of system if we can't do it with this so I'm going to save the edits. It's a lot of extra time. It takes 200 more days to do this. So hopefully it'll be okay. I don't know. I hope I saved it. Gosh darn it. I forgot about that aspect of it. Oh, well, we could always bring it in after it's built. So yeah, 271,000 right now. And what's the penalty for failing? At least it's not too bad a penalty for failing. We don't get a whole lot of money for succeeding, but it's not much penalty for failing. If we do get Milden, it's possible that we can get Lodbin as well. They're both in equatorial orbits. Uh, the issue is their orbits not only are equatorial, but also slightly in the atmosphere. So that's not good at all either. And then we just have the Venus contract. So, but, you know, if we can do it, we can do it. And also, this sort of rocket would be able to do the lunar flyby mission. So we're basically testing a lunar flyby rocket right now with this. So, yep, we've got another science data from space, uh, from surface of Venus. That's not space. Might want to edit the Venus probe to get a heat shield. And maybe we could do one of these contracts. Well, we'll hold off on that. I mean, it's got a lot of duration, though. Maybe we should pick it up just for the advance. The failure is pretty rough, but I mean, positioning a satellite in an orbit of Venus, we've basically done that. We just need to be more specific about it. So it's probably not too bad. Yeah, I'll pick them up for the advance. Of course, the moon ones are easier, but they also don't have as much of an advance. So we will see. I'll add a Venus transfer window on there. Warping to completion. We have a spare Lynx S, but we don't have enough money to attach a rocket to it, right? Well, now after getting the advances, we might. We don't need to put any body inside this. The Lynx can operate uncrewed, as, you know, you would expect from a capsule, actually. Seven days to roll out, though. Okay, well, we are going to give it a go. Let's see what happens. We do still have the launch escape system because, well, the capsule is very expensive. So, if anything goes wrong, we want it back. Okay. I don't think we have to do anything in particular to line up for Milden. Let me just verify. Oh, there's still a polar thing going here. Oh, that no, that's our own satellite. Okay. 
Um, Millen's Craft is right there. Oh, well, it sure looks a long ways off from this vantage point. But, okay. It's Apoapsis is here. It's Periapsis is... Wow, 115. I didn't realize it was that low. We definitely want to meet up with it on this side. Well, like we have a choice. Um, throttle up. SAS on. And... Okay. Ignition. 12 of these engines. And launch. We're just going straight down. So we're just going to hold 90 degrees and then once we can, at the equator, we'll make the adjustment. Only a 500 ton rocket. So about the same size as Falcon 9. But methane and oxygen first stage, kerosene oxygen second stage. Okay, going through max Q. Actually, I wonder how it is exactly. Like data, yeah, we're through max Q. We can actually check that. All right, boosters are getting done here. Booster separation. Ah, oh, that's nice and clean. No problems there. Well, launch escape system jettison. And that was very vigorous and convincing, as a launch escape system should be. I think we're looking pretty good overall. I think the healthy thrust weight ratio of the rocket initially helped out. I don't know if there's an optimal height to get to for this inclination change. Obviously, getting higher helps a little bit, but getting higher also means expending more delta V to get there, so... I basically set the third stage for... well, second stage, depending on how you count the boosters, for its maximum burn time of seven minutes. That's the rated burn time of that engine that I have. I mean, of course, we don't know what the rated burn time is for engine 2 vacuum from launcher space, I think it is. So, I made a best guess. And they've got seven minutes, basically. We've got a lot of data units on them, though. Because we use them so frequently because of their high advertised specific impulse of 365. Unfortunately, Millen's craft is definitely ahead of us. And there's no way we are going to get to a, into a lower orbit than it, so we're just going to have to wait a while. Looks like it's going to be less than 4,000 meters per second. Certainly enough for the lunar flyby. Not necessarily lunar orbit and break orbit, depending on what kind of orbit we actually get into around the moon, so... A little bit underwhelming for that purpose. But lunar flyby would be alright for. Okay... I'm letting our apoapsis get a little bit higher. Alright. 230 by 153. Might not be high enough to make an expeditious go of it. Let's see. Oh, it's paused. All right. Oh, gosh. <laughs> hmm. Okay. That is too close. <laughs> uh... Yeah, I don't know. That leaves us with like 30 meters per second right now. Um, can we dump some stuff? I mean, we could dump a little bit of food, water, and oxygen, but not a whole lot. I don't know if how it's counting the fairings. Mm. Well, we'll see what we can do. Let's just uh, finish up with this stage first. And then find out. I'll try and expend the fuel in the stage, uh, in the RCS tanks on this stage too. Carried a bit too much of that. I forget if I used an aluminum lithium tank on this one. If not, that could have helped. Way too much MMH in Mon 3. Thought those little tanks looked tiny enough, but no. Okay, starting the inclination correction burn. 
Well, we can keep the RCS going. I don't think it's doing that much though. The RCS thrusters on here aren't very powerful, they're 40 Newton. Temporarily suborbital. Hopefully. <laughs> I don't know if it's, if we jettison the fairings if it'll help. Our Delta V. It does a little bit. I'll keep one on just for looks. Wonder how much of a rendezvous Milden can manage. Well, on the bright side, this stage is going to de be deorbited, so no space junk on this one. Okay, yeah, we could have done with less RCS there. Alright. Separation. And ignition. Uh, we don't have much margin here. What if we dump the aero cap now? <laughs> I mean, there's an emergency procedure. Don't do this. Uh, real life space agencies. Uh, you need that aero cap, but let's just get rid of it. Okay. I want to take clear on this side. All right. Oh, one ignition failure. Whoops. Okay. That was not nominal. We really need to not re-enter the atmosphere, so we need to do this burn soon. Still ignition failure? Uh-oh. I had ragged on test light for allowing me to do reignites on things that had failed before, but maybe, maybe this is done for. Oh, this time it didn't. But we can't stop spinning. <laughs> These little engines do not gimbal. I think, so... We'll see... Well, that's not helping. Okay, well, uh, it's continuing. We need that periapsis positive. The pod has some built-in methane and oxygen to deorbit itself if necessary. It would have to be in a very low orbit, but that's basically where we're at. Eh, we no longer have enough Delta V. We're so way far away from the equator that we should probably just get back into orbit. Okay, barely in orbit here. And I think if we... Do we have to have hibernating warp on this? Yes, we do. Uh, maybe we shouldn't have, but anyway, it's recharging. Um, we've got 385 left, but I don't think that's enough to correct 5%. So, okay, this is not quite good enough. Again, though, it's a pretty decent test of a lunar flyby mission kind of thing. Just not exactly enough for our rescue attempt. We need maybe, just to be safe, maybe 400 more. Well, I'm just going to deorbit this now. Okay. We don't need a whole lot of juice to do this. I'm going to arm the parachutes right now, because we might lose communication. Okay, service module separation. I still haven't put the descent mode thing on here. Better do that before we start lunar missions. Okay, well, sun's up now. We've got Venus rising. We've got communications still cruising through because I set a fairly high periapsis, so it's taking a bit of time to deorbit here. But that was intentional, so we get closer to the Cape. Well, okay, not to the Cape, because we're equatorial. Uh, I guess the Amazon jungle, technically, because the latitude that I was... Uh, sorry, longitude that I was going for, uh, Cape-like longitude, would put us maybe... Oh, somewhere around here. So, not really where I want to be, but okay. We'll see. As close as we can get, anyway. For recovery. Well, I mean, if since we're gonna keep the capsule, maybe the recovery value is not so important, but... Okay, here we go. Well, 
high g-forces, which is why we want the descent mode thing. And it was originally configured with the descent mode thing, it's just that they changed how the descent mode module works, so now I have to fix that again. Well, I don't have to worry about aero cap disposal. Okay, we have a pod. Cover. Recover to VAB. Okay, and um, yeah, just checking. Oh, oh, we do have a select launch site thing. Hmm. Oh, it's just launch pad. But, okay, here, this, uh, I'm gonna call this Cape Canaveral. So, why does it say two? Let me, let me go to Kuru. I forget how Kerbal Construction Time works in this regard. Going to Kuru, see, no vessels in storage. I'm gonna rename this Kuru. Very important option for us. Okay, then I'm gonna go back to Cape Canaveral. And right now this is only this launch pad. So I think we need to develop the Kuru launch pad. Let me see. I mean, it says level one here, so I don't know. No, let me just say Kuru two. 10,000 funds. I mean, it's a steal, really. If it works. Rather than trying to launch the links to grab these Kerbals, I think we are going to go with Mark 1 pod this time. So I just unlocked the Mark 1 pod and it seems like its nodes are in the wrong place unfortunately. That doesn't give me a whole lot of comfort. This is just gonna be a rescue pod, we're not gonna be launching Kerbals in it. So, uh, considering it's low cost, I'm not going to put a launch escape system on it. Oh, I just noticed that the Mark 1 pod has its own ablator here, but I don't trust it. So, at least it has descent mode, but uh, yeah, I think uh, I'll leave some ablator. I remember there might be problems if it is completely lacking an ablator, but I'll, yeah, I'll leave some, but not all of it. Yep. Nope. Hope that's going to be okay. Otherwise, our Delta V is pretty good. We're just going with the single stick uh, SE-2060 rocket. Maybe I should, just to guarantee that we're going to get this done, add some boosters to it. I'll think about that. Uh, the pod has an internal antenna, but it's not quite the same range as the Lynx one, so it can't get up to the moon for communication, but it can get to the geosynchronous satellite. But we'll have to watch out for it in any case. Um, it does have the ability be, to be uncrewed, so that's fine. Otherwise, we have a little service module here, same engines. Um, we could get by with one engine. Uh, it's the same ones that I had on the Lynx, but I'm worried that one of them will quit. We had one of them quit twice last time, so... I'm gonna point them through the center of mass, hopefully, so that they can be properly redundant, but it's hard to do sometimes accurately. I'm just eyeballing it here. A lot of unknowns about this, though. Unlike the Lynx, we haven't tested this one this save before. 134 days. Well, that could manage it, but I want to give us all the margin we can, so I'm going to put boosters on. Well, two boosters increases the build time a lot. Okay, well, I'll accept the extra amount of time it takes to add the two boosters just to make sure we get this done. Got lots of thrust weight ratio. We've got plenty of delta v though, you know, we could always do with more. We could always do with more delta v. So, building one. The Venus window is before this gets complete. But we'll focus on this first. Yeah, we'll wait till the next window for the Venus thing. We've got plenty of time before those contracts are up. Let's just focus on this as the more pressing issue. Uh, I'll add a new alarm later. Okay, we are on the pad with the rocket. And I think we should try and time this a little bit better than last time with respect to Milton's craft. First of all, I'd like to be in daylight. That would be helpful. 
but also since we're going to get into a higher orbit we should make sure Melbourne's craft is definitely behind us and if this works out we can use it for lob bin as well by that time we might have the Kuru launch pad available as well so again this is just an emergency rescue vehicle not meant to oh has no operational SAS modules hmm hold on we are gonna roll this one back <laughs> Well, what sort of control core? Let's just have an early controllable core, I suppose. That has SAS. Will make me feel better. I'll just clip it in, shoot. <laughs> What's the worst get that could happen? It'll take an extra three days. Now SAS on. Yes, very good. Put all up. Ignition. We have six good engines, it looks like, and launch. Lots of thrust weight ratio. Okay, all is looking well. We should be past max Q now. Okay, booster set. Very energetic. And staging. Okay, we've got two engine two vacuums. Okay. And we want to overburn a bit, but not too much, so that it can catch up with us. Um, Willen's still way back there, I should have waited longer, but anyway, better behind than forward. Well, we are not in communication, now we are in communication. Um, as far as, and we're not in communication. But there's a location right at the descending node right there, so it's okay. We just need to... Oh, we can't add a maneuver node yet. Uh, makes things a little bit harder. Okay, and now we've got communication with that one. Okay, that should be good enough. Periapsis a little bit high, but that's okay for now while we are phasing. Setting fuel down and ignition. Okay, they both ignited. Once again, we are in the process of correcting our inclination, dipping our periapsis down. And once again, that will mean that this thing deorbits. Fortunately, this time our service module has a lot more thrust in relation to the capsule and a shorter burn time. So it won't be as at as much risk. Depends on our communications though. Okay, separation and ignition. And these two are okay. That's the pods RCS right there. Which I hope will work properly. We've got some residual roll here though. Maybe I didn't put the engines on quite right. I don't know. Roll rate is mildly increasing, but probably not by that much. We are, we are on physical time warp, so it looks worse than it is. Not ideal though. I think these engines must be a little bit off. We've got some time to stop the roll though, thankfully. Ah, uh, we can't correct the inclination much more right now, so we'll wait until we get to another ascending or descending node. Uh, we could have lifted the apoapsis a bit, but we'll wait. And ignition. Yeah, it's starting to roll again, so some the, the engines are off. Whoops. Okay, well, that's good enough. Relative inclination 0 0.02. We'll just wait. I think we'll have enough electric charge to wait. I'm gonna go sun... Is it down or up in this? I want the tail to be at the sun. I think I want sun up then. Because the sun's probably back there-ish. Okay, and precision rotation relative to the sun, and we wait. 
there's one reason why SAS is important because persistent rotation only works with it as far as holding the orientation is concerned. Yeah, we are recharging now. That's good. Okay, that that gets us close enough to render range for me to be satisfied. So relative speed of only 41 there, 22.4 is what we're doing initially after an orbit. Double check, it's not trying to get us into the atmosphere anywhere here. Okay. Accidentally plot a maneuver that dips us into the atmosphere, totally happens. Now recharging doesn't seem to be that great. Uh, we deplete too much on the nighttime side and we don't replenish enough on the daylight side, but we'll get this done before that becomes an issue. And ignition. And shut down. Milden had better appreciate this. The combined mission costs were definitely more than what we're getting paid to rescue Milden. Okay, initial rendezvous burn. Now will get our closest approach distance much closer. Time to closest approach only one minute. We want to make sure that happens before we hit the atmosphere or Milden hits the atmosphere for sure. Milden is so deep in the atmosphere, like 115 kilometers, that would be probably dangerous now that we are entering render range. I wonder what kind of pod Milden is in. Looks like one of those weird ca advanced capsules figures. Oh, we don't have control actually. Okay, well, let's see if Milden can get out of there and... I, I don't know, will Milton have EVA propellant even? Hmm. Doesn't have any control, this thing. This is all very worrisome. Uh, Milton has EVA propellant. Some food, no electric charge though. Does that work? Why no electric charge, by the way? Okay, Milton can still EVA himself without the electric charge though. So as long as we can get over there. Mm -mm, grab and board. Okay, Milden is safe. For now. Okay, so we have made a transfer. Milden is in a weird place in the IVA view. Uh, apparently the camera is sort of clipped into the wall because of the rescaling stuff. Okay, so well right now our periapsis is suborbital, but it's not suborbital in the place I want to be. So uh, prograde. Not that we did a great job last time with the Amazon jungle thing. It probably doesn't matter. We, we could probably just deorbit now. Uh, how how much do we want to belabor this? Um, periapsis is in the middle of the Atlantic. I guess it's not too bad. It's probably better than last time anyway. All right, we'll just straight up deorbit. Uh, I don't even know if I should use the engines, but okay. Well, that hurried things up a little bit. The HTP system had better work. Service module separation. Okay, it does. Shall we use descent mode? I guess while we have it. We probably don't need too much of it though. Now it's about thermal things. Milton's a two-star pilot, should be able to take the G-forces. It's using the RCSO a lot. Let me just not hold. Okay, stop. <laughs> uh, we'll wait a bit before correcting things. Okay, well, I'll just manually do it. That's gonna use less HTP. Okay, now Smart ASS in negative surface velocity seems tamer. I think the atmosphere is helping that out. It still tries to control pitch when I turn off controlling pitch. Okay, yeah, it's still trying to control pitch here, even though I told it not to. We are at the whims of the airstream here. 
Okay, we've got flame effects. This is a lunar rated heat shield, so it should be alright. And definitely isn't experiencing much ablation. And as far as G forces is G forces are concerned, uh it doesn't look like we're gonna pass four G's. Uh well, seven point four, I don't know when that was. That was probably on launch. Okay. All is well. Okay, we've got full parachute deployment. The velocity is safe. Splash down and recover. Normal recovery this time, I'm gonna go. Yeah. Just to be safe with the Kerbal. But uh, yeah, and the pod isn't very expensive. So, And that contract is gone from Kerbal Alarm Clock, so I presume it is successful. We got the money back for the pod anyway. And Milden is ready for his next assignment. So, all is well. And we've actually got quite a lot of science to distribute. I forgot about that. But next time we'll try and do something else. Let me see when the next Venus window is. 570 days. Well, we've got some time to wait for that. Maybe we'll, we'll rescue Lot Bin. Maybe we'll do something else. We'll see what contracts we have. We do have a lunar flyby capable rocket, and we probably have a lunar flyby contract. So we'll see about that. But with that, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.